Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today a slightly different one than normal but it needs to be done so I thought I'll film it and uh, who knows it could be entertaining. So I was uh, coming down the stairs last night and uh, I noticed that there was two dots on the wall here. If you look closely you can see one here and you can see one here as well. And then I came up a little while later and I thought that's strange because look there's a line going across it, and I thought, hmm, that looks like water to me. These little lumps here were not here last night, they're a new addition. So, I thought, well, what's on the opposite side of this wall? So I came over to the bathroom, and I looked in the corner here. Sorry, let me just put down a seat. Looked in the corner here, and basically I noticed a little puddle. Forget the toilet roll, I just wanted to see how much it would actually wick up. And sure enough, I thought, oh, this isn't good. There's a bit of a leak going on here. And I thought more than a bit of a leak because I could feel that the backing of the plasterboard there was uh, was coming away. So I thought, oh, that's not good. Then I went down to the kitchen and I noticed that there was a bit of a puddle here. It's been wiped away now, but it was a puddle here, which is directly where that light is there. And then my eye was drawn to this corner here. And you can see it's all bubbling up. And as well as that, I noticed a nice watermark going down here and you can see the wood there as well. So obviously there's something major going on above here. So I'm going to have to take off the bath panel and see what's happening. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride. Let's see if we can fix this leak. So this video today has been sponsored by the <coughs> My Mate Vince Massive and this month that consists of Saturnine Cinema, Robert Hughes and Operational 117. So massive thumbs up to them and also every one of my other patrons that allow these videos to be made. So let's get started now, just in case you're new to this channel. I am not a plumber by any means whatsoever. I have a few basic tools. I'm hoping I'll be able to get this leak fixed. But what you see in this video, take it purely as entertainment. You're not gonna learn anything. If you wanna learn something about plumbing, watch a plumbing channel. This is just an average Joe trying to fix a leak in his own house without calling out a plumber. Let's get started. So we need to undo the three screws at the bottom here. So it feels like at the moment that this house is a bit like a clown's car. There seems to be just something wrong with it. Things are just falling apart constantly now. It's not, uh, it, I don't seem to have a week go by where there's not something wrong that I have to spend a day working on it. So I'm hoping now, if I can, oh no. Oh, doesn't look good, look in there, look at all the, the floor, look how dark it is. That's what it should look like, that light colour. Oh, there's something really, really, really leaking in there. All right, let's get rid of this. It's a serious leak going on. Let's get the torch in here. Right, we've got a nice bit of fur growing there, nice bit of mould. So now, oh, okay, I can see a drip coming from here a lot. Look, there. So now, is it, oh, no, is there something coming above that? Oh no, it's coming from above that. Where's that coming from? Oh no, that's, sorry, what I'm looking at there is the shadow. <laughs> right, uh, okay, so that is the pipe that goes to, I can't even see, hold on a minute. One second. That's there, that pipe goes into into the pump, isn't it? So basically, this is a bath that's also like a shower, but we never use it as a shower because the blinds in the window just get sopping wet, so I've got like a shower in the ensuite, but the previous people must have used it as a shower because it's got this sort of bit here. So there is a, there is a pump. Oh, and that's, yeah. That is leaking right onto the box there. Right, so what do we need to do now? We need to definitely work out, is it that, is it the pipe that's leaking there or is it, uh, so has the pipe just failed or is it dripping down from somewhere else? Because the problem with water is it drips to the lowest point, doesn't it? So that could be dripping from elsewhere and then just working its way down there. So I think what I'm gonna do is, let's get this camera on a tiny little tripod facing up and I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna feel this pipe going up here and see if it's running all the way down. I don't think it is. I think that braided pipe has just failed, which actually would be good for me because it means it's uh, not gonna be a nightmare to fix. Well, I think the sensible thing to do is to try and kill power to that shower pump there because 
you can see the water's going very near the cable. I'm sure the RCD thing would have tripped, but just in case it, it, it didn't, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna see if I can just kill power to that. I think I found the switch, so I'm just gonna turn on the bath now just to see if it's uh, kicking in or not. No, it's not. Excellent. Right now, let's see if I can feel up here, see if it's coming down from up here. Right, that all feels dry. That feels dry. That's all sopping wet there. So has the braid just failed halfway, halfway through? Uh, now I should there should be some sort of cut off to this. Is there any cut off? So basically, luckily for me, it's the output from the pump that appears to be leaking. Of course, unless it's coming from higher up the wall, which I suppose is possible, but I'm not going to know that until I. Uh, Oh yeah, that's sopping wet as well. Hold on. Worryingly, there seems to be a lot of water above that as well. Unless that's just to do with like a a cold pipe, you know, condensation. Well, at this moment in time, I can only see one thing that's leaking, and that's that pipe there. So what happens is, do you see these massive two valves here? These are the, these are the, like, the incoming water. And this one, this big pipe here, goes into one of the inputs of the pump. The other one goes around to the other input of the pump, and then those flexible hoses come out of the pump for the hot and cold water. So all I have to do is, if I turn this off now here, I suppose this will kind of prove whether, if that leak stops, whether or not it's uh, sorted. And already the leak has stopped. Excellent. So this isn't going to be a nightmare to change whatsoever. The leak has now stopped. I'm worried about the pipe above it being, uh, being what feels like wet, but the problem is the cold pipes, because the house is warmer, they can get condensation on them anyway. There you go, you can see it's not dripping now. Well, there's one drip there, but it's not dripping constantly, is it? Yeah, okay. Well, that's good. So, I might as well turn them both off, just in, just in case, but... Let's just see if this will turn it. If not, I'll have to get a bigger one. There we go. They're both off. So now I'm gonna get a bigger spanner, and I'm gonna try to undo this flexible hose here. Now, I think I know the comments are going to say that I should be replacing all the pipes under there. The problem is, for me then, it turns into a relatively easy job to a potential nightmare. So yes, if one's failed, maybe the other flexible hoses are going to be starting to perish, possibly. Or maybe I was just unlucky with that one. Maybe it had a bit of a kink in it when it was installed or something and it might have weakened the inside of it. I don't know. I'm going to be using these tools here. I've got a big adjustable spanner here, a small one, and I've got this thing here as well. Uh, this thing doesn't work very well because it slips all over the place purely because my tool is just a very, very cheap one. So I'm going to take off the old one. I'm hoping the valve is going to be all right, and then hopefully there won't be any leaks anywhere, and then I'll know exactly the length that I need to order up on the new one. Right now, the camera angle is going to be absolutely awful on this because there's, there's no room even to get my hands in, let alone get the camera and my hands in. So uh, I'm just going to be probably fast forwarding it through. But all I'm doing, remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So I'm going to have to get this on one of them and then another one on the other side here. You see there's two bits to it. This bit here, you probably can't see, but there's this bit here and this bit here. So I need to undo this bit from this bit here or loosen up this bit while holding that one, whatever. It's going to be more comfortable. Right, annoyingly, that's as wide as that one will go, so that's not going to fit there. So I'm going to have to use the tool that doesn't work very well. <sighs> Come on. 
Yes, excellent, I've broken the seal. So that's the nut off it there. So now this should pull out and leave the olive behind. <clears throat> Come on. See, that's the olive there. That one there. get to it. Well I think what I'm going to do is, because I'm going to end up damaging a pipe here, I'm going to undo it from the other side. See this one's coming off particularly easy because it is just the, uh, it is just plastic so look at that. I can't see what I'm doing, I'm just doing it purely by feel. There it is. It's out. Right so now I have to I've got more room now to work on this bit here. I'm going to have to use another spanner on this side here because it is just, it's just welded on. There we go. That broke it. Come on. Excellent. Free, we're free. So now, ideally, you should be replacing that olive because it's already been compressed down. But the problem is, you see, I have to, yeah, I'd have to undo that there, and then I'd need to get two olives as well and a bit of pipe. But I haven't got a cutter. If I had the cutter with me, then I would do that because I just need to buy some 22 mil olives, put a new one in here, and a new one in here, and a new bit of pipe. But uh, I just I kind of want to get this done today and I don't want to have to be travelling to uh, to my dad's to get the cutter. I don't even know if he's in. So uh, yeah, this is what I need to buy. So I'm just going to measure this one up here now. So it's got that on one end, which is like a kind of tap connector. And then we're just going to have a 22 mil compression fitting on the other end there. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see where, where, it's, uh, where it's gone. Must be just on that little bit here. You can see there's an ever so slight kink on it. Maybe that was enough to, to make it fail. Well, I'm going to pop the screw fix and get one of them. Well, I've just had a thought. I've taken off the pipe that was connected, the flexible pipe that was connected to the tap there. And what I'm thinking is, why don't I see if I can get a tap connector to a tap connector? Because in a way, all this thing in the middle is redundant. It's just, it's just more chance of having a fault there. So I've been to Screwfix here, and uh, amazingly, they didn't have what I wanted. And I looked online, I looked at Tool Station, also looked in B&Q as well. And these are pretty big, but well, they're not like plumbers merchants. They probably would have what I wanted, but they're still the big DIY chains. And uh, yeah, they, they haven't got, hey, this is what I, I wanted. Uh, a three quarter inch because the tap is going to be a three quarter inch and then the shower is going to be a three quarter inch so I thought I could just get one long one between the two but it wasn't, wasn't the case now rather than messing around with this olive and stuff here I thought to myself I've really got a load of plastic pipe and stuff up in uh, left over up in the attic so why don't I just get some push fit connections and then just use plastic pipe in between so this is exactly the same here you can see we've got the 22 mil side here and then sorry the three quarter inch side here so this is going to go onto the tap and this one here is going to go on to the shower pump and then it ends in 22 mil on this side so I just have to put a little bit of 22 mil pipe in between and then it will do away with this one here because this one had a bit of a kink bit of a kink in it here as well and it will do away with the 41 now I could have made up my own just using these here because I have got spare ones around the place the problem is this is really really stiff and not very flexible 
so I'm thinking that this is just going to be a lot easier to work with. So I could have saved myself £10 and I could have definitely got it working just using what I already had. But I think this will just be a better job because it will be more flexible and there will be less strain on the bath taps and also the shower pump as well. So what we now need to do is just make up a short piece of plastic pipe. So I'm only going to make it like a few inches long. Put a couple of inserts into it and although the plastic pipe I'm, not, I'm using is not the same make as this, because it is uh, to the same spec, you know, the British standard spec, then it can be used. So I looked up online and this will work with other manufacturers' pipes as well, as long as you use the pipe and the insert from the same manufacturer. So let's make a little bit of that up. I've got a big reel of 22 mil here and also 15 mil down there as well. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna cut off a big chunk of it and then I can worry about it downstairs in the comfort. So this is a nice cutter here. Well, it's not a nice one, it's a very cheap one. But what you do is you open it up like so, and then you can see as I do this, it's going down bit by bit until it goes all the way through. But to make it easy, I'm gonna twist the pipe as well at the same time. I know the lighting's awful here. But watch this, so I'm just uh, coming down on it here, like that, and now I'm just rotating it round, and then another one. And then I can just go all the way through. And you see there, I've got a nice clean cut. So you have to have a clean cut when it comes to using plastic pipes. Let's pop the inserts in and get it cut to size. And when you have a nice clean cut, you can just pop that in the end there. So I'm just gonna try to straighten up the pipe a little bit. Really, I only want a section from the middle. So let's cut it up again. I know this is a waste. It was really just for the just for the filming. So let's do it there. So a little bit down. Right. Let's pop the insert in. There you go. So I've got a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to try to cut that one more time, but I think because of the bend on the pipe, I'm not going to get this perfect. See if that goes in. Yeah, it's going to be good enough. I think this just gives it strength. I think I'm going to leave it about so long. There we go. So now I've got a nice short bit of pipe with the inserts in on both sides. Now the good thing about this is it will allow the connection to swivel a little bit so it's gonna put less strain on the flexible pipes. Let's get this installed. Right, so these are just so easy to use. Watch this, you ready? So basically it needs to go in uh, about that depth there. So we're just gonna be about, I don't know, like a, a few millimeters before this P here, but watch how easy it is, you ready? There. Done. Oh, actually, that went further than I thought. And now look, can you see? That's not going anywhere. Yeah. And it allows it to turn as well. So now, when we're doing these pipes up here, there's going to be less. There's going to be less twist because you know if this is copper and everything, then once you do one side and try to do up the other side, then it just starts twisting. But look at that. That's what makes it so nice and easy to work with. So yeah, happy with that. I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine. Now we've got to connect these up, one side to the tap and one side to the shower. The one that's going onto the pump here, I won't be able to show you it because I can't get the camera in there. So I'm just going to do that off camera and then we'll try and do up the one to the actual bath tap on camera. Now remember there's little rubber washers already installed in here. That was a complete and utter nightmare because I think it might be slightly cross-threaded. It didn't matter how many times I took it on and off, it just wasn't going on nicely at all. And I, I know what it feels like. It should just go on hand tight all the way down. It wasn't doing that. So you can see it there. I've just got a little mirror here to help me because I couldn't see what was going on whatsoever. Anyway, look, I, I think it's on. Whether it's going to be watertight or not, I don't know. But it, it, it's a nightmare. It should just do up by hand. But that wasn't doing up by hand whatsoever. So uh, now, hopefully this one should be easy. 
because I can see exactly where it's going to. So let's get the tripod set up and let's see if we can do this one on camera. Well, see, this is metal against metal. The problem is on the on the other ones there. There you go. See, that's going on hand tight now. Uh, on the other one, it's plastic, so it's really easy to cross thread it. Okay, and I'm just going to give that a tiny little turn. And I think that'll do. Now let's have a look at the pipe work. So we've got it going down there, down here. Let's see if that's twisted or not. Slightly, slightly kinked at the bottom there. We're not kinked, but it's a bit of a tight angle. I think it will be okay. So from there, down, around, in here, and then over, and well, I can't see see it whatsoever. I'm just doing it by feel. Right, let's uh, now turn those tabs back on there and let's see if we have any leaks anywhere. That's that one done. And that's that one done. Okay, I'm now going to put the water pump back on, empty out what's in the bath and let's run it. Let's see what, uh, see if we have any drips anywhere. Yeah, there's no kinks there, that feels nice, I'm happy enough with that. Right, here goes, you won't be able to hear anything now because this pump's so noisy. Okay. I might as well just do the cold water because we haven't been working on the hot anyway. So far so good, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some tissue and I'm going to wrap it round. I can see, I can feel the one up here, that's fine, but the other one's hard to get to. So I'm going to get some tissue, I'm going to wrap it all around, round it and then I'll know. That's just the drain going away. Then I'll know whether it's dripping or not. Right, I know it's only been... 30 seconds or so, but let's see now what it's like. It's dry! Brilliant, excellent, okay. Right, what we're gonna do now is, I'm just gonna leave that on it for a little while, and so let's go down to the kitchen, and let's see what's in those little air bubbles off, uh, you know, the bubbles on the wall. Let's see if they're full of water, or whether they are just blistered up. Yeah, that feels fine. I suppose if I was worried, I could have put a bit of PT FE tape, you know, that very thin tape, and that might have helped it. But uh, with the rubber washer, you shouldn't need, I don't think you need that, because the rubber washer is the thing that's doing the sealing. So you probably won't see this up here again, because what I need to do is I just need to get rid of all this mould and try to dry it up a little bit with some kitchen towels and old cloths and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm happy with how that's gone. I know it doesn't look as nice as copper, but plastic is supposed to last, I think it's supposed to last 20 years or 25 years or not. Whether it will or not, I don't know but it's certainly a lot easier to work with than copper. Right, let's go down to the kitchen. Right now, this is where it meets the ceiling. Oh, it's really blistered up. Let's give it a little pierce. I think it's, I don't think anything's in it. Let's do it at the bottom, see if anything comes out. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, it's like picking a spot. Look at it. Ready? There you go, look at it screaming out. Actually, that's quite satisfying. Or well, maybe once all the water comes out, look at that, there's loads there. Look at it, sticking up there all on its own. Maybe once the water comes out, I wonder would that go flat again? Or I wonder would I be able to 
heat it up gently with my heat gun or a hairdryer, would that pull it back in again? Basically, I don't want to redecorate this room because I've only just done it in the summer. I wasn't expecting it to come out like that. Now let's see if there's any more coming. Yeah, it's still coming, look. Little hole already in there. They're gonna come out. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, every time I tap it, comes oozing out. Right, so I'm finished, but I'm not happy with the results. So if you look closely up there, you can see all I've really done is push the bubbles up towards the ceiling. So I've got a massive ridge going across. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it now for about a month. And then when it's fully dry, I'm gonna get a standing knife. I'm just gonna cut off the top part there. Then I'm gonna use filler, fill over it to make it the same level as the wall and just touch up the paint and that will feather it into the other paint that's already there. And you won't even notice it. And now it is about two weeks later and annoyingly I had to lift up all the flooring as well. Well it wasn't exactly hard, it was just like cheap lino anyway. But at long last it is drying here. But what wasn't drying is the lino was acting as like a barrier. And this area here was sopping wet even a week and a half later. So I had no choice, it's still drying out there you see. I had no choice but to lift it because otherwise it just would have never dried. So. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing how much a small little leak can impact so much because it just keeps on spreading. And there's one more thing I've got to show you as well. So here we are under the stairs and there should be loads of boxes and stuff in here. But instead of that, there's loads of wet tea towels and tiles trying to dry up the sopping wet carpet because I've had a leak here on this stopcock. When I had the leak in the bathroom, I turned this off. Then when I fixed it, I turned it back on. But I didn't turn it on fully, I just had it about three quarters full because I thought to myself, I have huge water pressure here anyway. What I didn't realize is that unless it's fully open, this weeps quite a bit. So I have tightened up this little knuckle here, so hopefully it will ease with the weeping if somebody doesn't have it fully open in the future. But because this has been dripping quite frequently for the past couple of weeks, it has wicked all the way along the carpet, all the way down here, all the way down here, all the way to the entrance, and luckily it's just stopped just short of the wooden floor here. So uh, yeah, it's amazing how when you have a leak, what's amazed me is how much the water travels. I would have thought that it would just pulled up over there, but it doesn't. Anything that's dry around it will drag that water and drag it through the dryness, and then that will become wet, and then the next thing that's dry to that will then drag it through. It's gone all the way. Here it's dry, just about, but here you can see the, well you probably can't see, but there's a discoloration here. Under here is sopping wet. This is still, watch this, watch my hand now. And if you can see again, you can see how wet it is. Honestly, it's like buckets of water have been thrown on it. Luckily though, it's concrete under here. So the water is not going to want to go through the concrete. It will be just working its way up through the carpet. And this is a wall carpet as well. So it's not really, it might shrink a little bit, but it's not really going to cause it any problem. So uh, moral of the story is if you have a leak, get it seen to ASAP because water really does travel. Even little drips add up. And then uh, a week or two later, you have a complete and utter nightmare on your hands. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. Slightly different than my normal ones, but still hopefully enjoyable in a different sort of way. If you've got any enjoyment from it, give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more Trying to Fix videos. Take care. Bye now.